tables. This is an actual table. It's brilliant. It's got the legs there. I love it. Anybody who wants to buy me a present, buy me that. Brilliant. You know, obviously for making an effort to, you know, do this. Tables. They are not tables. It's very confusing calling them tables. Um, what they basically are is key, is key value pairs of entities stored in a table. <laughs> um, they have an API, REST API, and there's no fixed schema. So they're a bit, especially when you come, come at it from SQL, they're a bit strange. Um, so one of the things you have, I'm trying to remember now, you have two, two rows, a partition key and a row key. These uniquely identify every single entity in your table. So all of your entities must have a partition key and a row key. Beyond that, you're pretty much unlimited. So what you tend to see is people kind of draw it like a table, and you say, OK, this will be, I'll call this my customer name. He'll have Bob. Um, I'll say which state he's in. Stay, he's in AK, what's that, Arkansas? Alaska. Alaska, sorry. Americans in the room, it's always helpful. And you store that for that row. Then for the next one, you go, OK, I know he's in Orlando. Orlando. Oregon. Hmm? Oregon. Oh, yeah, Orlando's a <laughs> not really a state, is it? And then you can have favorite color. Hang on, let's put it in US. And that can be blue. The data can be completely disjoint in the tables. So it doesn't really behave like a table. But it, what it is, is it's very fast and it's very efficient. Um, you can have up to 255 properties, so 255 rows or columns per entity. And they don't have to be the same in any way, shape, or form in, in one given table. Um, and you can have up to one megabyte per entity. The values can be any kind of standard .NET type. Um, nothing particularly inter interesting there. One of, the, one of the key things is you can do group transactions. So you can perform an atomic insert, update, delete for multiple entities in one shot. No, it can be no. It can have any mixed type. So I can I can put I can put state here of three. Yeah, exactly. There is no it forces nothing upon you, um, which is kind of strange. But it is basically no SQL. Yeah. They're all different data types and totally random. How can you do a multiple instant update? Because each entity contains its own information. So you do an ent so you do each entity says I want this entity I want all of these I want all these name value pairs to be this I want this entity all these name value pairs to be this and there's no consistency that, that is enforced upon you between entity rows. When you say it's fast, do you mean effectively Yes. Yeah. Kind of indexing. Uh, indexing is also very fast. The only index you have is your primary key and row key. That's it. That's the, if you want any other index, you have to have a different table. So it's quite common for people to have the same data stored in multiple tables for different types of searches, um, purely for optimization. Um, it's very efficient to query, but it's very important that you have you maintain the partition key. So you're only when I say it's atomic, it's only atomic within a partition. So you can't update two different partitions in one shot. And I'll talk about partitions right at the end. 
So they're aiming for about 2,000, uh, five, was it, 500 transactions per second per partition and several thousand transactions per session per account. So there's a lot of throughput there if you choose to make use of it. It's quite common for this to be used as, for example, indexes, search queries, that kind of thing. Um, Windows will monitor your, pap your partitions, and one of the things is that your partitions can, might not be local to each other. So they might be on completely separate racks on completely different computers. And the load balancer, that cloud little bit at the top, will point you at the right area when you choose, when you cho when you choose to request the information. It can be, but it doesn't need to be. And Windows and Azure will actually handle that for you. So Azure will do all the scaling of your, part, of your table for you in order to maintain uh, performance. Again, this is a, a multi-tenancy system, so there are other people sharing, inf sharing information. How this is stored, no idea. Don't know what's actually behind it. Um, so best practices, always use your clustered index for queries. If you don't, it's going to have to do table scans. It's going to take a while which is why you don't want to do large scans. You always want to include as much data as you can in order to limit your scans. If at any point, there we go, uh, there we go. do not remove, reuse data service context. So data service context, so um, SQL Server programmers are quite used to having a connection and reusing that connection over and over again. In tables, don't do it, just throw it away. If anything fails, if you're doing it across multiple, multiple, transact, multiple operations, throw it away and restart. Apparently, the creation of these service contexts is minute. It's not like a connection. It's just, it's just something that is stateful and you just want to get rid of it immediately. You can also have read only scenarios. So there is something on here which I haven't talked about, um, which I'm trying to remember. It's basically a way to ensure merging you get conflicts, you can actually resolve them. Um, so say, for example, I perform an update, somebody else has the data and then performs an update. Afterwards, you've got to ensure that the, I think it's the kind of a, a, version, of the a version of the entity is maintained. Um, if you want read-only scenarios, you can turn that off and it speeds things up a bit. And always, if you can, do things in groups. Um, you're only charged per transaction. So, of course, the fewer transactions you can do, the cheaper it's going to be. That's tables.